Can a low carb, diabetic friendly bread mix in a bag be good, tasty, and fulfilling? We're going to try and answer that question today by reviewing Bob's Red Mill low carb bread mix in a bag. So stay with us. During these times when most of us are staying at home, making more food from home, and trying our best to stay healthy, more and more convenient foods are becoming more important. While we want to cook more from scratch, there are some times where some convenient foods really come in handy. And we ran across Bob's Red Mill Low Carb Bread Mix in a Bag, and I thought as someone who bakes a lot of bread at home, it'd be interesting to see how these products stack up and what they taste like, because sometimes I just don't want to cook from scratch. So let's dive into the review. Now, full disclosure, I have not made this bread mix. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. So let's talk about the bread mix right off of the bat. For those of you that don't know, Bob's Red Mill is a company that was originally started in California in the 1960s, but moved up to Oregon in the 70s and has since made their headquarters in that area. And they're a company that doesn't necessarily focus on diabetic friendly and keto and alternative flours as much as they do health foods. So everything from almond flours to artisan flours to granola to bread mixes like we have here. There's a variety of things this company offers. I'm a huge fan of this company from the perspective that they can provide me with a lot of health ingredients that I like to purchase and use, not only in a lot of the recipes that we use here for our channel, but just everyday baking that we use in my household. Let's talk about the low carb bread mix that we're reviewing today. A couple of basic facts about this mix that are important to know right off of the bat. Number one, the net weight for this package is 16 ounces, and the net carbs for this is five grams, meaning that total carbohydrates for this mix is nine grams, but four of those grams come from fiber, and because they're not digested into the system the same way, the net carbohydrate impact to your blood sugar is gonna be five grams. Now, the flour blend, I think, is really interesting with this mix. It uses a combination of whole grain oat flour, oat bran, oat fiber, flaxseed, along with whole rye flours, wheat bran, and vital wheat gluten. Now, we're gonna be following the recipe on the back of this package today. First, we need one package of Bob's Red Mill Bread Mix, which contains not only the flours, but also a yeast packet that we're gonna use in today's recipe as well. All right, we'll put that off to the side. Then it calls for 3 fourths of a cup of water, at 90 degrees, and I'm hovering right around 90, 91 degrees, so that's perfect for this. We take a teaspoon of the bread mix, as well as our yeast, and let it sit to activate the yeast on its own. It's been 10 minutes, and as you can see, our yeast mixture has developed a lot of bubbles on top of the water, and that's exactly what you wanna see, because that means the yeast is alive, and it's gonna do its job during the baking process. I just wanna to talk to you about a couple of tools that I'm gonna be using today to help make the bread. Number one is a six quart large container. We're actually going to be proofing the dough in this. It helps keep a lot of the mess on the counter constrained to a container like this and super easy to wash. The second thing that I'm going to be using is a Danish dough hook. This is absolutely indispensable when it comes to making breads at home because different than a wooden spoon or a spatula or a fork, because of the way this is shaped, it's really conducive for mixing flours and liquids together much easier and keeping a lot of that off of your hands, at least initially, until the dough starts coming together. So the next thing that this recipe re recommends after we pour our yeast liquid in here is that we put three-fourths of a cup of heavy whipping cream. They suggest that it be 90 degrees. We're gonna mix that in with the yeast mixture, along with two tablespoons of oil, and then our egg. I'm gonna go ahead and just mix that into the liquid, and then using our Danish hook, we're just gonna stir that up a little bit. And now we'll dump in our flour mixture. And we're just gonna stir that until all of this comes together. Once most of the dry flour is absorbed, and I'm at that sort of crumbly, feathery stage like we are here, I will switch to kneading by hand. And they suggest kneading for about five to six minutes. And this is what your dough will look like when it's done. Now we're gonna oil the inside of the container with a little bit of vegetable oil, as well as put some around the outside of the dough and let it proof for an hour. 
our dough is now fully proofed according to the recipe's directions. Now let's take a look at it. It, it totally looks like a brain. <laughs> That's a little interesting, but um, I'm not worried about <laughs> I'm not worried about the taste or anything at all. According to the recipe, what we're supposed to do now is turn it out onto the counter and punch down the dough. Then what it asks us to do is to fold the dough, press it into almost like a rectangle or a square, fold in the corners, and then roll it back into a kind of a log, and then bake it in a grease pan. We're gonna spray the top with a little bit more vegetable oil, and now we're ready for the oven. This is a preheated oven at 350 degrees. We've been preheating our oven for a couple of hours, so I'm not concerned about any cool or hot spots. And we're gonna bake this, per the recipe instructions, for 50 to 60 minutes. Our bread has come out of the oven, it is fully cooled. And before I took it out of the pan, I wanted to just talk to you about my initial reactions. Per the recipe, after you punch down the dough and form it into the log shape for the pan, it's supposed to go immediately into the oven. Typically in most baking recipes, you would have a second proof to aerate the final form and provide some texture. Because we didn't do that here, the bread didn't rise. So it's much smaller and probably a lot more denser than I would have initially liked. Now that's just my initial impressions. We'll try it in just a second, but I'm a little underwhelmed by the final product. Let's cut into it, see how it looks, and most importantly, see how it tastes. My suspicions were totally confirmed. There's no air bubbles in this dough whatsoever. I mean, it is literally just a dense bread, if you will. So I almost feel like the recipe is missing a step, at least, at, at least to this point. It's really dense. It's breaking in the way that we folded the dough initially. Now that we're getting into some actual breakage there, I'll take my bite. Not bad, not great. This bread has an incredibly earthy, grainy taste. It's really lacking in salt. It's really lacking in any sort of flavor profile that would overcome some of the texture challenges because it's really gritty. Again, just because it hasn't had time to really proof some more, it's just super, super dense. I mean, can you hear that? So my concern is that the, benefit, the health benefits of this don't compensate for the lack of flavor, the really dense texture. I think it'd be great as croutons. I think it would be great if you cut it really thin for a sandwich. But beyond that, I just, I don't know what I would use this bread for in my own household. So what do I think in summary? I love Bob's Red Mill products. I use a lot of them here. So I think the core flour blend has a lot of promise. I have a lot of concerns about the recipe. Missing that second proofing time completely changes the texture. I think from a cost perspective, it's fairly competitive with pricing at an average of 485 to around 550 per bag. So there you have it. Our testing and bread review for Bob's Red Mill Low Carb Bread Mix. We hope you've enjoyed this video. We've had a ton of fun making it today. This was really interesting, especially since we make bread and we've got a lot more bread recipes coming up on future videos, so be sure to look out for that. We'll have a QR link at the end of the video if you have, if you would like to purchase this product. We'll have it at a couple of different online websites to be as, most, to be as competitive with pricing as possible. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you got a lot out of this video and this food review. Please let us know in the comments if you like what we're doing. Give us a thumbs up. Share our channel and our videos with your friends and those that you know that may want to eat a little healthier, especially if they're watching their blood sugars and are diabetic. We really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in a few days with another video. Until then, be carb deliberate, take care of yourselves, and see you soon.